All right, so we were on the right track, but we did have a few bugs. Uh, first of all, we do not want to, st we don't need to store this abs x depth or abs y depth, and we should not be using absolute value of depth here, obviously not, because the absolute value is always going to be greater than zero. We actually want to use x depth here and y depth here, and we want to subtract from the absolute value here. There we go. Uh, there we go, yep. Also, a pretty big bug uh, right here. Uh, this should be position.x plus equals f de x depth and position.y plus equals f de x depth or y depth. But we're going to be changing that in a second too. Uh, to check which collision is, uh, is, is, is deeper, uh, the, the easiest way to do that is to use the max function. We're going to include algorithm at the top. And the max function will f return the bigger of two numbers. So we're just going to say max x depth 0. Because if it's less than zero, then we don't want it to uh, be recorded as the one that has a deeper collision. Or, yes. And then for the y depth, we're going to do the same thing. It's actually std max y depth. There we go. That's, that's proper. Uh, we also, uh, we're not using the center of the player for the position. We're actually using the corner. We forgot to do that. So let's just say glm. Vec2 center player pos equals position plus glm vec2 uh, agent radius. There we go. And now we can use center position minus tile position to get the proper distance vector. And then down here, uh, depending on if x depth is negative or positive, we'll determine which direction we uh, push out. Uh, we're going to say, or if, or, d d d sorry, the dist vect, determining if or depending on if the dist vect is positive or negative, my brain is is breaking down. All right, so if dist vec dot x is less than zero, then we're going to subtract. Else, we're going to add position with x depth plus equals up to x depth, and we're going to do the same thing for the y direction. We'll just change all of these to y's. Y depth and y depth. So this should work correctly. Let's go ahead and test it out and see if we can indeed collide correctly. There we go. We are colliding with the walls in all directions. We can walk around, we can bump into walls, and we can apply this collision to humans, zombies, everything since it's implemented in the agent. Now there is one thing you will probably notice. If you try to slide along a wall in a particular direction, uh, in the y direction at least, uh, you might get stuck on the wall. This is happening because we are colliding with the bottom tiles before the top tiles. So what we're doing is we're detecting a Y collision when in fact we should be collect, uh, detecting the X collision of the first block. Now I'm not going to solve it in this tutorial series so we can move on, but if you want to solve this bug, what you need to do is sort the tiles based on distance and only update the closer tiles first. So we can stop that. Now we are properly moving around. So we can use that to uh, just dump a bunch of uh, different zombies and humans and things in the world and have them meander around and bump into walls. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go to human.cpp. And let's go ahead and create, uh, create a init function for humans. So we're going to say void init. And just like our player, we need to pass in a speed and a position, but we don't need to pass in an input manager because the humans are going to be uh, using very simple AI to do their own movement. So let's move this into the CPP file. And we'll say human init. There we go, and we're going to say speed equals speed and position equals pause. There we go, and now on the update function, we are going to collide, so we'll say collide with level, and we're going to pass level data. But we're also going to make the human sort of just walk around randomly. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to give the humans a direction vector, and they're going to just follow that direction vector, and then we'll kind of randomly move this direction vector around every so often. So let's give them a private variable. And let's go ahead and say glm vec2 direction. And let's go ahead and initialize direction uh, in the init function. And we're going to say direction equals. 
And what we should do here is we should just use random direction, which is start them out with a random direction. So we're going to need to use a random number generator. Include random. There we go. And we want to use just a single random number generator uh, for all of the humans. So what we'll do is we'll just use a static one. So we're going to say static. And then uh, I believe I showed you STD default rand engine. Random engine. A better random engine is STD MT19937. It's a much better engine. And then we need a distribution. So we're going to just generate numbers between 0 and 1 for the x direction and the y direction, and then we'll just normalize those vectors. And we should probably not generate between 0 and 1. We should generate between like 0 0.01 and 1 or something, just to make sure we don't end up with a direction of 0, which doesn't make any sense. And so we need a uniform distribution. So we're going to say static uniform or STD uniform uh, real distribution. And this is going to be a float. And we are going to do it from 0.01f to 1.0f, like that. And let's go ahead and say, uh, let's go ahead and seed the random engine with time null or null pointer. And to do that, we need to include c time. C time. There we go. And all right, now whenever we want to generate a random direction, we're just going to say uh, direction equals glm vec2. And for the x, we're going to say, oh, I didn't even name this. We're going to call this um, rand deer. We'll call random deer with random engine and random deer with random engine. And this will generate us two numbers that are random numbers between, uh, let's go ahead and do, let's do negative one and one. I think there's almost no chance that uh, they will both end up being zero. It's like astronomically small odds. Uh, we can check that if direction.length equals zero, just in case, I believe this is actually a function, yes. Just in case it's zero, we'll just say direction equals glm to 1.0, 0, 0.0, just something random. Just because a zero direction doesn't make sense. Click. Make sure direction isn't zero. And this is uh, get random direction. Then what we're going to do is uh, we are going to normalize it. So direction equals GLM normalize direction. Remember, this makes it unit length so that whenever we want to move the human, we will just move him in direction uh, with a certain speed. So for now, we're not going to change the direction. We're just going to move the humans in that direction with that speed. So we're just going to say position plus equals, oops, position plus equals uh, direction. Did I forget the underscore I did? Position plus equals direction times speed, like that. Now, there's no acceleration or deceleration here. We should probably use that to make it look nicer and make it uh, smoother. But for now, we'll just do it like this and just see if we can get a bunch of people randomly walking around, all bumping into walls. Uh, and they will not be colliding with each other. They'll just be walking in random directions. And we'll make sure they walk really slow. All right, so now we need to generate all of our humans. So let's go ahead and go to init level. And we're going to say for int i equals zero, i is less than uh, levels current level dot or arrow get num humans. Let's go ahead and do that. So we need to actually write that getter function. So let's just go up here and add the getter. Oh, that's not right. Go to the header file. So we just need to write a getter for that. So uh, return, or sorry, int get num humans const return num humans. There we go. 
Then we just do I++. Plus plus. Add all the random humans. All right, so we need another uh, random number generator here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and just, I'm going to copy paste uh, the code from human.cpp. Just copy that. And we'll throw that right here. Uh, we need to include random. Random, yep, and C time. Great, and this time, instead of doing a, where are we? Here we are, init level. Instead of doing a uh, random number between negative one and one, we're going to do a random number between uh, one, rand pos, between one, and this will be an integer. This should be a uniform int distribution. There we go. A random number between one and then the width and one and the height for x and y. So we, these don't need to be static because this is only going to happen once. Rand x and we'll do rand y. Now we need to be able to get the dimensions of the level. So let's go ahead and do that as well. Uh, let's go ahead and go to level.h and we're going to assume it's a square level. If they did not properly make the level a square in the level.txt, then we're going to have some problems. But let's write some more getters. We'll say int get width, and that will be uh, const, and this will just be return level data. We'll just say zero dot size or length, either one. We'll say size. They both do the same thing. And get height, and that will return just level data dot size. Because remember, this is the y direction. If you don't have if you're not looking at the string, when you are looking at the string, that's the x direction, because we have a vector of strings. So here we're just going to say levels current level get width and levels current level get height. And we'll say minus one. We don't want to spawn them on the edge. Width minus one. All right, so now we can spawn some random humans. So let's go ahead and say uh, humans dot push back new human. And we can initialize that human. We'll just say humans dot back, which is the most recent one we just pushed back. Uh, arrow init. And we need a speed and a position. So let's go ahead and do a, we'll make a constant float here. Const float uh, human speed equals 0.5f or 1.0f. So we'll give them a speed of human speed. And for the position, we need to use a new glm vec2 position. And it's going to be initialized to rand x of random engine times tile width and rand y of random engine times tile width. And there we go. And this will be uh, rand x will return an integer and we will multiply that by an integer and then they will be turned into floats because it's glm vec2 and we'll just pass that in. All right, so we should get a whole bunch of humans that are randomly meandering around and bumping into walls. They're all going to walk in one direction, or in different directions, but, uh, aha. So it looks like we are getting an issue here, because have we not set up the level yet? What's the issue? Aha, well, this should be get height, first of all. What's going on here? Let's run it again. That was interesting. Abort has been called. Invalid min and max arguments for uniform int. Aha! So, we are getting invalid arguments here. Why, why is that invalid? Let's see here. Let's print these out to the screen. Could be that our width and height are wrong. Let's 
Let's run that. Aha! Negative one for width. So width is zero for some reason. Uh, did we load the level? Yes, we did load the level. Let's go to get width. Why is this returning a, a zero? Ah, you know what? I bet you... I bet you it's reading this line right here. It's reading the rest of this line because there's a new line here. And our very first... <laughs> our very first level data uh, row has a length of zero. It's just an empty row. So what we need to do is just go to level.cpp and throw away the first line. Rest of the first line. Level data. Now we should be good. There we are, but we got another issue. It looks like we have, aha, a collision issue. So some agent is getting spawned outside the world and we're getting a collision. So let's just say, let's go ahead and do a check here. Uh, if, just, as a, just to make sure that nobody's outside the world, and if they are, we'll just uh, not do anything. If corner pos.x is less than zero, or uh, corner pos.x is greater than uh, level data zero dot length, Uh, minus one, or if it's greater than or equal to. So that checks the X to make sure it's in bounds, and we'll say or corner pos dot y is less than zero, or corner pos dot y is greater than or equal to level data dot length, or dot size, whichever. I'll do size. If this happens, we're just going to return. If we are outside the world just return. And to prevent this from happening, we can uh, make sure that we spawn. We can say minus two. Perhaps that's the issue, and we can start at two. So nobody's going to spawn right on the edge. Let's try that again. There we go. So we got a bunch of people, and they're all walking in the exact same direction. <laughs> so all of their random directions are the same. And also, they don't have the correct color. So let's go ahead and init them with a, a good color. Uh, let's give them a really annoying color. Let's give them like magenta or something because that's what the original zombie game gave them. We'll say color.r equals, uh, we'll say 255, and we'll say 200. Color.g equals zero. Color.b equals 200. And color.a equals 255. There we go. So what is the deal here? Uh, oh, because we already have seeded this, we don't want to keep seeding it every single time. Otherwise, we're going to keep getting the exact same uh, random number. So we'll say bool is seeded equals false. Let's make it a static bool is seeded. Only want to seed the engine once. And we're going to say if is seeded is equal to false then we see the random number in, in, uh, generator actually pretty sure we don't even need to do that pretty sure we can just do this oops we can just take time null pointer put it right here in the constructor yeah that that's that's what we should do much easier all right now let's run it again now they should all go in random directions yay all right they're all walking in random directions they're not bumping into each other, uh, but they are bumping into walls. So they're not very smart, obviously. They just go in a random direction. So how can we make them randomly change direction? Well, to do that, uh, what we should do is we could use a the GLM rotate function to just rotate their direction vector a little bit each frame. Let's see what that looks like. I have no idea what it's going to do. We'll find out. So let's say uh, direction equals glm rotate of, we'll say direction. I believe we can do it with a, a vector. And for the angle, let's just say 0.1f. Let's see what happens. Can we do that? 
has no member named rotate. Let me pause the video and see if we do indeed have this function. Okay, we just need to include another file up here. Include glm, then gtx, then rotate vector.hpp. That will let us rotate vectors. So now we can call glm rotate here. So let's just see what happens if we uh, rotate them. So let's, uh, we're going to need some more random number stuff. Let's go ahead and do that here in human update. So rand, this time it's going to be random rotate. And the random rotate is just going to be a very small number. We'll say anywhere between negative 0 0.01 and 0 0.1, 0 0.01. Actually, let's do a little less. That may be too small. All right, so we're going to use random rotate here. And let's see what happens. We got build errors. Where did we, where did we get build errors? Expects three arguments. What is the third argument? So angle and normal. Hold on a second. I didn't actually read this function definition. I'm just being dumb. Random rotate of random engine. There we go. All right. Now let's try. Uh, and they don't seem to be changing direction much. But that is most likely because of just the the entropy of this. Let's try making it, this is probably too small. Let's make it 10. Let's try that again. There we go. Now they randomly kind of meander about. Now we don't want them to just keep constantly changing their direction just all the time because that makes them kind of zigzag like a crazy uh, person. What we should do is we'll make this a little bit bigger. We'll make it 20. And then what we're going to do is we're only going to do it every uh, certain number of frames. So let's just say uh, we'll make an integer, int uh, frames. And then what we're going to do is start frames at zero. Oops, frames zero. And then uh, we're only going to uh, do this right here if frames is equal to 20. So we'll do it every 20 frames. And we'll say frames equals zero. Else, we'll say frames plus plus. Randomly change direction every 20 frames. There we go. All right, now let's see what it looks like. It's a little bit better. So they still kind of walk in a straight line, but whenever uh, 20 frames is passed, they kind of pick a new direction. And we should make them pick an even bigger new direction. Let's, let's make it 40. This is probably degrees, between positive 40 and negative 40. That looks okay. Now what we could do also is whenever they bounce into a wall, or whenever they collide with a wall, we immediately change their direction so that they're not just slamming their head on the wall like this. So let's go ahead and do that as well. Let's go ahead and whenever we have collide with level, uh, whenever it actually does collide with something, let's make it return true so we can determine if we did collide with something. And to do that, we're going to go to agent.h and collide with level is going to be a boolean function. Or coll sorry, collide with level here. This will be a boolean. And let's change this to a boolean. And we're just going to say, we'll put a return true here. And we're going to say if size is equal to zero, if, if the number of tiles we are colliding with is equal to zero, we're going to return false. And now what we can do is in human.cpp, we can say if we collided with a level, then we'll do the random rotation. So that whenever they're bumping into a wall, they're going to quickly move off into a new direction. Let's see. There we go. So they quickly change direction. Sometimes they zigzag back and forth a little bit. But they won't just ram into the wall and just slam their heads. Now this is really dumb AI, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time working on this AI. Uh, simply because we need to finish. And I actually am going to have to go here in a second. I have class. Uh, so I may need to finish this tonight. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, I hope we're all having fun. Now, 
What next? Let's go ahead and do collide uh, collision uh, with other humans. So let's do some some more collision here. Now what we need to do is uh, let's go ahead and go to uh, agent. There we go. And we're going to collide with all other agents. So we'll have another uh, another function collide with agents. And what it's going to do is it's going to keep track of all of the people we have collided with. Uh, so we're we're going to try to collide with everybody, and then we're going to uh, return all of the people we did collide with uh, to whoever called the function so that they can decide what to do with it. So that if a zombie collides with a human, we can decide, well, we collided with a human, so let's turn that human into a zombie, or whatever. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and make another function. We're going to say, uh, we'll say bool. Or no, not a bool. We'll say just void. Uh, collide with agents. And here, we don't need the level anymore. We just need the humans and the zombies. And uh, we, could, we could instead have just used a, um, a vector of agents, but we have two separate vectors for humans and zombies, so this is how we're going to do it. All right, let's go to collide with level. And in this collision function, we are going to be doing circular collision. All right, so... What we need to do is, uh, so the, actually there's, there's, a, there's a better way we need to do this. We actually don't want to have two separate vectors for humans and zombies. Uh, what we should do is calculate all collision. Uh, we, we should, instead of having collide with agents, we should just have collide with agent. And it's going to check collision with one agent and return a bool if it does happen. That way we can optimize something. Uh, so I'm going to, I'll explain that a little bit more. But for now, let's just write collide with agent. So collide with agent is going to take another agent. Agent star agent. And it's going to collide with this agent. All right, and let's copy that and put it here. There we go. Collide with agent. And what we are going to do is check collision using spherical collision and if we did collide we're going to return true if we did not collide we're going to return false now if we go back we're actually not spherical circular collision remember what we have to do is find the distance between the two as this vector then we get the depth of the collision using their radiuses kind of like the same thing we did over here and then we're going to just push them both out by equal amounts all right so let's go ahead and do that so first we need the position of this uh, agent and since both agents are the same size we can just uh, we don't need to actually here we go since they're both the same size we don't need to get this center position right here if we wanted to we could just use the corner position since the relative positions are exactly the same uh, but for correctness I'm going to go ahead and use the center position in case you want to have different sized zombies or things like that so glm vec2 why did that aha uh -huh. This should be agent, collide with agent. So glmvec2 uh, center pos a, we'll say that's position plus glmvec2 of uh, agent width divided by 2. And agent width divided by 2 we can actually store as a const variable, const int uh, agent. Let's, <laughs> instead of defining them here, let's go ahead and just save agent radius in the header file. We'll go up here. And agent radius right here. Const float. Oh, it was a float. I am so dumb. It's okay. 60.0f. We have all these typecasts all over the place for no reason. There we go. So we do have agent with or agent radius now. So we don't need to define it here. And are we defining it here? We are not. Cool. Alright, so that is center position of A. Let's get the center position of B. And this is going to be agent get position. All right, and now we need the vector between them. So glm vec2 dist vec equals, we'll say center pos a minus center pos b. Now I'm probably going to get my signs wrong here several times, but I'll pause the video if I'm wrong. Uh, and now we need to get that depth of collision again. And this is going to be pretty much the same thing we did with uh, the uh, check tile collision. Oh, that's weird. Where we use the min distance function. And in this case, min distance is going to be instead of agent radius plus tile radius, it's going to be 
two times the agent radius, or agent radius plus agent radius. So let's copy that. Min distance equals agent radius plus agent radius. All right, well, we'll just say times two. Now we're going to get the collision uh, depth here. We're going to say the x depth is, or actually we don't, we don't even need to do x and y because we're not doing a box collision. We're doing circle collision. It's even easier. So we're going to say float collision depth equals glm length of distvec. So this will get the length of this vector right here, this black vector that I'm drawing. It's going to give us the length of that. And we can check that against the minimum distance. And if that length is less than the minimum distance, then we do have a collision. So float, or sorry, this isn't collision depth, this is length. Or this was uh, dist length, distance. Ah, that's a good name. And float collision depth equals min distance minus distance. So if collision depth, since min distance is going to be the larger number when we're colliding, we're going to say if collision depth is greater than zero, then we have a collision. So if this is the case, we're going to end up returning true. Otherwise, down here, we're going to return false. And what we need to do is push them both out by the length of their collision. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to say uh, the, can we, I, I think we can access the position. So we're going to say agent, we'll say this dot position. So we say position plus equals dist vec uh, divided by two. We need to each we need to push them both out by equal parts, so we're going to push them each out by half. And then we're going to say, uh, what is it? Uh, agent position plus equals dist vec divided by 2.0 f. Now notice we can access the private variable of agent because we are in the agent class, and the agent can access the agent's private variables. And this should actually be minus equals. Now I probably got the sign wrong here. It's probably minus equals and plus equals or something, but we'll find out. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Oh, I'm not calling collide with agent, so that won't work. Now we need to call collide with agent, and we're going to do that in the main game. So when we go to update, where are we? Update agents. This is where we're going to handle collision with other agents, because we have to do some special things. So update collisions. So what we need to do is loop through all the humans and for now, we're just going to collide them with all the other humans. So for int i equals 0, i is less than humans dot size, i plus plus. And we're going to go ahead and do collision. Uh, and what we're going to do is for each human, we need to try to collide them with every other human. So we need a second for loop for int j. And we could say j equals 0, j is less than humans.size, j++, and then collide with each of those humans, but that's going to cause us to have a little bit of redundant checking. What we should actually do is say j equals i plus 1. This is going to allow us to check fewer humans. It's going to allow us to check every pair of humans together a single time. Uh, j is less than humans.size. And we'll say j++. All right, so now we can do the collision. So let's just go ahead and do the collision. We're going to say humans i arrow collide with agent humans j. Now in this case, uh, this is going to return true if they collide, but we don't care. If two humans collide, they're just going to push out. They're, nothing else is going to happen. So let's go ahead and run. This should be interesting. Ah, so it's, it's wrong. I believe I got the plus and minus incorrect, like I said I would. So let's just change this to minus and change this to plus. And we'll give that, oh, actually, we do not want to push them by the length of the disvec. This is actually incorrect. We're pushing them out too much. So my plus may have been correct. We actually want to push them out by the direction of the disvec times the collision depth. We only want to push out 
uh, by the total length of the collision depth. So we're going to say GLM collision depth vec, or sorry, GLM vec2 collision depth vec equals the normalized distance vector, so GLM normalized dist vec times the depth of the collision. Because remember, that's like uh, a unit vector, which has a length of one, times our depth of the collision will give us a vector of length, dis of, of length collision depth. So we're going to use collision depth vec when we do uh, the position change. Now I may, I, I believe the signs are right now. There we go. So I can push people around, I can shove them out of the way. They'll bump into each other. Everything is all well and good. And we can use this to do our little zombie thing where the zombies will hit the humans and uh, turn them into other zombies. So let's go ahead and uh, start programming our zombie. And after that, we'll have it so that zombies can turn humans into other zombies. And then finally, we're going to need to give the player some guns so we can blast the zombies and, and kill them all and save the day. So we're running at a pretty good frame rate here, it seems. Let's see what we can... Uh, what we can do with this, let's actually increase the number of humans to 400. Let's see how dense this can get. Now we are, all right, so 400 is definitely too slow. Now why is it too slow? Well, there's a few reasons. One reason is we are running in debug mode. I haven't taught you about running in release mode, which does optimization. Your compiler will actually optimize it. We are actually running in the slowest possible mode right now, which is okay. In a future video, we are going to... Uh, improve this game and make it run faster. Uh, and also our sprite batch could also use a little bit of help, but I'm pretty sure we are CPU bound here because of the debug mode. Uh, because 400 sprites should be incredibly, incredibly easy to draw. And uh, there's, there's a lot of optimizations we can do that we will be doing uh, that will make it just much, much faster. So let's go back down to 200. 200's fine. We will be able to have many, many, many more once we do the optimizations. Mark my words. All right, so we have... Uh, that, let's go ahead and do the zombies now. Let's go ahead and create some zombies. So what we need to do is, for each of the zombies, uh, where is the level initialization? So add the zombies. So for each of the zombies, we need to just add a new zombie. So we're going to need to get the... Uh, what was it? We have that function. It's... Get it again. Get zombie start positions right here. This is what we want. So we're going to get a handle to our vector of positions. So this will be zombie positions equals levels current level. And this is going to be get uh, zombie start positions. And now we can loop through that for int i equals 0. i is less than uh, zombie positions.size. We'll say I++. Plus plus. All right, and for each of these, we are going to do kind of like what we did here, except we're going to do zombies. So we'll say zombies.pushback new zombie. And for the position, we're just going to use zombie positions I. And we also need a zombie speed variable. And let's actually make zombies faster so that they don't get outrun by the humans. We'll make zombies go 1.3. Zombie speed. There we go, and this should be zombies.back. Remember, copy pasting is bad, so make sure you definitely changed everything and you don't have any bugs. All right, so that will add all of the zombies. Now we need to update the zombies. So let's go to update agents, and we're going to update all these zombies. Now, if we had just a list of agents, we could do a single for loop, but that's okay. This isn't going to be any less e efficient or anything like that. So we're going to loop through zombies. Oops, zombies, dot size. And we're going to update all the zombies. And we're going to pass in humans and zombies. We're going to get the level data, all that. So that will update the collision. And, and so whenever we are looping through humans here, uh, what we're going to do is humans are going to collide with other humans. And we're going to just have zombies do the collision with other humans. Uh, we don't need to do double collisions or anything like that. We don't have to have a for loop in here for zombies and a for loop in the zombie collision one for humans. We don't need to do that. So update human collisions and update zombie collisions. All right, so first, let's collide with other zombies. Collide with 
other zombies. And this is going to be collide with other humans. And this will be collide with humans. So this should be zombies, zombies, zombies. And this is humans, humans, humans. So now, here is where we turn humans into zombies. We're going to say if there was a collision between the zombie and, or sorry, with zombies I and humans J, what we're going to do is turn humans J into a zombie. So to do that, we're going to push back a new zombie. So we're going to say zombies.pushback. We're going to say new zombie. Then we're going to initialize that zombie. So zombies.back uh, init. We don't have a zombie init function, so let's go ahead and write that. We need to initialize the zombies. Zombie.h. Uh, we'll do the init above. So void init. And just like the human, it's going to take the speed and the position. There we go. And let's go ahead and put this in the CPP file. Should be zombie init. All right, and so what we're going to do is say speed equals speed, position equals boss, and color dot r equals zero. Color dot g equals we'll say one sixty, and color dot b equals zero. So these are going to be green zombies. And color dot a equals two fifty five. Good, and now we can go back to main game and properly initialize it. So the speed is zombie speed, and we should actually go ahead and put these at the top of the CPP file so we can use them in other places. Remember, it's okay to have global variables if they're constant. That's fine. Uh, here we are. Here we are. Zombie speed, and for the position, we're just going to say humans j dot get position so we're going to make a brand new zombie in the exact same position as the human we collided with and then finally we need to delete the human so add the new zombie and delete the human so we're just going to say humans remember we're going to do that that vector trick we're going to say humans j equals humans dot back and uh, first we need to delete humans j don't want to have a memory leak this will free the memory. And then we call humans.pack pop pop. Humans.pop back. All right, humans.pop back. All right, so now if now the zombies aren't chasing the humans yet, but they will be randomly bumping into humans, hopefully. So let's go see if we have that zombie in the bottom right hand corner. I should make the player move a little bit faster. Out of my way, pink people. All right, where is our zombie? Where are we? This is a very big map. It's bigger than I thought. <laughs> we need to be able to move faster. Alright, zombie's not here. Did a zombie even spawn? Tell you what, let's do this. Let's spawn a new zombie right by the player. Oh, that's right. I went to the wrong corner because I'm getting confused. I should have gone to the top right. That's right, we'll just put a new zombie right by the player. Alright. So we have two zombies for now. And let's make the player speed just a tiny bit faster. Just because we are trying to test this game as fast as we can. Uh, where, where do we... init level. We'll say, a, we'll put a player speed. Const float player speed equals 5. And down here in init level, we will set that. I am blind. Here we go. Alright, let's try again. Should get a zombie. Oh, no zombie. Looks like we did not... Did not create the zombie. Or he's invisible. Okay, some people just disappeared. Ah! Ha! We have invisible zombies. Because we never drew them. We never drew the zombies. So let's go to the draw game loop. Draw the zombies. Of course. All right, now we should see some zombies. All right, there's a zombie. He's not moving because we're not updating him. Let's push somebody into him. 
Uh, yay, we got zombies. All right, now let's update the zombies. And to do that, we need... Oh, we are updating the zombies. They just don't have any behavior. They're just standing in one place. Now, whenever we collided uh, the zombie... Aha, yes. When we collided the zombies with the humans, we're doing I plus one here. We should actually be doing just I, or just zero. We should loop through all of the humans. However, the very first human, if you remember, the very first human is the player. And if we collide with the player, we don't want to turn the player into the zombie. Uh, what we want to do is either make the game end, we'll probably just make the game end. Uh, right now, if we collide with the human, we're going to delete our player, and we're going to have uh, an, an error. It's probably going to crash the game. So we're just going to loop through humans starting at 1, so we're going to skip the player. And we're going to check collision against the player. Collide with player. So we're going to say uh, zombies, we'll say if zombies I collide with agent. If we collide with the player, then what we're going to do is end the game. So we'll just say fatal error. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll abuse our fatal error function and say you lose fatal error. And that's a uh, Benjin fatal error. We shouldn't be using fatal error, but that's what I'm going to do. Got to include errors.txt up here. And then after we do that, we'll exit the game. So where is fatal error? Actually, I think fatal error exits the game for us. Yes, it does. You're lying to me. It's right here. I included errors. Oh, because I'm stupid. Benjin errors.h, not just errors.h, of course. All right, now we can run. So let's try to lose the game. Yay, we got you lose in the command prompt, and then it says enter any key to quit, and then we press a key and the game ends. All right, so you don't want to touch any zombies, obviously. Now let's make it so that the zombies actually chase people. And to do that, we need to go to our zombie update function. And we need to make it chase the nearest humans. So uh, first we need to uh, do our, well, we need to do our collision last, actually. If we go to human update, we do pretty much the same thing right here. Uh, except zombies are not going to have a random direction. They're just going to be going towards the nearest player. So we'll do collide with level at the bottom so we don't forget. And we're going to move them towards the nearest human. So we need a function to get the nearest human and then move towards that human. So let's make a function for that. This will be a private function. And we're going to say int. It'll just return the index of the human. Get nearest. Actually, we'll return a human pointer. Get nearest human. And let's forward declare human here. Class human. And we will pass in... Oh, we already, oh, agent already does that, so we don't need to forward declare. That's why we're not getting any errors here, because agent has the forward declaration for humans. All right, so human star, get nearest human, and we're going to pass in the vector of humans. All right, and let's go into the CPP file and implement this. Uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. This is zombie, get nearest human. All right, so first we're going to have a human star uh, closest human, and we're going to set that to null pointer. So if we return null pointer, that means there aren't any humans at all. Now we're going to loop through the humans, uh, and we also need a closest uh, distance. So we're going to say float uh, uh, smallest distance, and this is the distance to the closest human, and we're going to set that equal to a huge number. All right, so for int i equals zero, i is less than humans dot size, i plus plus. So this is going to loop through each of the humans. And first, we need to get the vector between uh, the human and the zombie. So glm dist vec equals uh, closest, or sorry, it's going to equal humans i dot, or arrow position. We'll say get position minus position. 
and then float distance equals glm length of distvec. And I did something stupid. It should be glm vec3 or vec2 distvec. So then we get the distance, and then we're going to say if distance is less than the smallest distance, then this should be the new smallest distance, and this should be the new closest human. So we're going to say smallest distance equals distance. And then we're going to say closest human equals human's i. And then at the very end, we need to include human up here so we can actually use humans. We have the forward declaration so we can, we can refer to humans, but we can't do anything. It's going to give us this pointer to incomplete class type not allowed. We have to include human to be able to actually use the class. Ugh. Ugh. All right, there we go. Uh, and now it should stop giving us an error here. Oh, because it's not underscore humans. It's just humans. And finally, at the end, we just return closest human. And here we can say human star closest human equals get nearest human. And we're going to say if closest human is not equal to null pointer, then we're just going to move in that direction. So what we're going to do is get the distance vector between them. We're going to say glm dist vec equals closest human uh, arrow posi get position minus position. Then we're going to just change our position by, we'll say direction, we'll just call it direction. And we'll say glm normalize here. That's much easier. So we're getting the normalized direction towards the human. Because remember when we take uh, vector A minus vector B, it gives us an arrow pointing to vector A. So we're pointing towards closest human. I did it again. I did it again. And now we can move in that direction, what's the, wrong, what's the problem here? Oh, vec2. So now we can move in the direction. So we're going to say position plus equals direction times speed. And there we have it. So now we are, the zombies are chasing the humans. Now, hopefully our game isn't going to slow down too much now because we have a lot more processing and we're still running in debug mode. Uh, but we'll see. If yours can't handle 200 players without optimization, then, uh, uh oh, there we go. There we go. The zombies are chasing us. It works. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Now we have one last thing to do. We need to give the players some badass machine guns and shotguns and stuff and then use it to uh, kill the zombies. Oh, I lost. You lose. Press any key to quit. All right. Now I am going, I need to go to class because I do have class and I have to go to a meeting. Uh, tonight I will finish it and I will uh, we'll give the guys some guns and we'll shoot at some zombies. I know this is a really long tutorial. Thanks for sticking with me, with me so far. I'm probably going to split this up into several videos. This is probably video number three right now, two or three. It's been, it's been oh man, it's been in like three hours. I did take a, a break in there, but all right. See you next time. Well, see you tonight, I guess. Yeah.